As we all know, there are two versions of Killer Instinct, the arcade version and the Super Nintendo version, but which one is better? In this video, I will analyze their differences and compare their pros and cons, so that you will ultimately know which one is better. Arcade Pros The arcade version has much better graphics and sound, with nicer animation. It has big stages which sometimes rotate, and the dungeon stage is infinite which looks cooler. Shadow moves in the arcade version have the shadow effect, and the arcade version also has shadow enders, which are exactly the same as turbo enders except they go even faster and have the cool looking shadow effect to them. The arcade version has longer combos, which of course are only useful for showing off and not actually for fighting, and in the arcade version, Orca's medium kick auto is two hits, thus a little harder to break. And in the arcade version, some characters are slightly longer range normals. For example, Saberwolf's Crouch Fierce Punch goes a little further in the arcade version than in Super Nintendo. And in the arcade version, Cinderstone has his body flames when he turns invisible. And in arcade, the CPU in single player game is harder. And of course, the game saves high scores. Arcade Cons the arcade version has some really screwed up gra graphical glitches, which will appear in rotating stages. The arcade version has a lot of gameplay glitches, some of which are pretty broken. The arcade version also has the Ender Juggle glitch, which is very broken, such as Infinite Juggles. And, Cinder's bugs are even easier to do, such as, such as his extremely broken Stun Juggle, and even his unblockable Normal glitch. And Fulgor lacks the unblockable mind game setup that he has in SNES, thus he really sucks bad in arcade. And in the arcade version, TJ's overhead sometimes doesn't even hit Riptor. And crouch medium punches are almost useless because the fake overhead will come out instead if your opponent cr crouches for even a split second. So if you wanted to use a crouch medium punch, you would have to not hold back, which is quite inconvenient and rather risky. This means some characters become even less useful because of their inability to rely on their crouch medium punch, because the moment they hold back, they risk a fake overhead coming out instead, which would leave them vulnerable to attack. So pretty much if you wanted to use a crouch medium punch, don't hold back, but then that means no blocking. And um, in the arcade version, a lot of normals connect very poorly, or in some cases not at all. This means less combo openers for some characters. And Air combos connect rather poorly and inconsistently and unreliably in the arcade version. And Sable Wolf also has a stun uppercut, which is broken. And um, there are inconsistencies in the combo breathing system. For example, some characters might have an unbreakable ender. Cinder, for example, has an unbreakable lin linker as well. And there are also other unusual exceptions, such as Spinal's medium punch auto only being breakable with medium rather than weak. And in the arcade version, the, dis the dizzy system is not completely reliable. It's pretty inconsistent. And um, also, TJ's crouch medium kick is very slow, and he has limited unbreakable combos. And in the arcade version, some enders and ultras will not randomly work. I mean, will randomly not work. And of course, the arcade version has no stereo sound. It's only mono. Super Nintendo Pros. The Super Nintendo version has a reliable combo breaking system. For example, no more unbreakable enders, unbreakable linkers, etc. And no, no more strange things such as breaking autos with an unusual button. And the Super Nintendo version is more, has a more reliable and consistent dizzy system. And all enders and ultras work when they're supposed to. And of course, normals connect a lot better, thus giving characters more offensive options and combo openers. And in the Super Nintendo, Ender Juggles were removed, which means no more cheap infinites. And fake overheads will only come out when you press back plus medium punch, and not down plus back plus medium punch. This means no more accidental fake overheads, and that you can now safely rely on crouch medium punches, which automatically makes several characters more useful and versatile than they were in the arcade version, and improves character balance. And in the Super Nintendo version, TJ's, TJ Combo's Crouch Medium Kick is no longer slow, and he can now end his combos with his Crouch Fierce Punch Uppercut, which is a great improvement over his, uh, over his arcade counterpart. 
And Riptor's Dragon Breath attack, which is his low flame, has um, a quicker recovery time, thus improving his combo reset options. And TJ's overhead no longer misses versus Riptor. So that way it um, hits 100% of the time and you can always rely on it consistently. And Saber Wolf no longer has his broken stun up cut. And Cinder's bugs are a lot harder to do. In other words, they require better timing. Super Nintendo Cons The Super Nintendo version's graphics are inferior to arcades, and so is the sound. Also, there are no scaling or rotating stages, and some combos are shorter in the Super NES version. Though in both versions, big combos are completely useless in a real fight, as any decent player will break them. Also, the Super NES version doesn't have the cool shadow animation, and also doesn't have any shadow enders, which are faster versions of turbo enders with the cool looking shadow effect to them. And the Super NES version, um, Cinder no longer has his flames, which, make him com which means he turns completely invisible when he does an invisibility move. Basically, you can't see him because there's no flames for you to know where he is. And also, in the Super Nintendo version, Cinder's air torpedoes are easier to use because it has a rather disjointed hitbox. And in the Super Nintendo version, unblockable crossover jumps against um, a recovering Glacius are even easier to do than on the arcade version. Also, um, in the Super Nintendo version, some characters have less range on some of their moves. Also, um, the, the CPU player in the single player game is less challenging. There's less difficulty with the AI. And um, also, I don't know why, but the Super Nintendo version doesn't save high scores. And of course, the fatalities in the Super Nintendo version are pretty dull and boring. They don't look as good as they do in arcade. And the winner is... The Super Nintendo version of Killer Instinct. Sure, the arcade version looks a lot nicer, has some shadow enders, and overall looks and sounds cooler, but it's really inconsistent and buggy. And what we really want in a fighting game is a game that is less buggy, more consistent, and has less randomness, and overall you can rely on it for serious competition. If you're looking to do big combos all day and impress your friends, then you'd probably go for the arcade version instead. Though if you want to go for a serious fight and want a game that has a more reliable game engine, with the better mechanics or improved mechanics, of course go for the SNES version. Because that one is pretty much a lot cleaner, a lot more consistent and less buggy than um, the arcade version. And the character balance is improved, as because some characters now have um, their crouch medium punches at their disposal, they have more options, some do have better range now, and overall the game's been improved. 